I'm uh, just painting my bedroom here, our bedroom, I guess. All three of us. Um, miserable day outside. Um, not a pleasant fall day. Drizzle, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm listening to Professor Gregory Sadler's a half hour Hegel, the complete phenomenology of spirit, done piece by piece by painstaking piece. Um, really like listening to that guy. Um, he's nice enough to upload all these philosophy lectures lectures onto uh, YouTube, and he seems to be interested in ethics, and that's something that particularly fascinates me. Um, but uh, you know, it's precisely the kind of thing that's good to listen to when you're, you know, doing something kind of mindless, like painting your walls orange. Or in my case, painting philosophical maxims onto the wall. <laughs> um, I must have the world's most tolerant wife because uh, she lets me paint stuff like this directly onto our bedroom wall. It's funny, I uh, just mentioned that to her today and she said, could you paint it over, please? It's hard to make a case for your right to do this for the, <laughs> to the bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody says, no, you can't do that, it's hard to say, but uh, why not? But uh, she seems okay with it. She asked me to maybe paint over it, but I think I can buy a little bit of time and she'll let it go. Extremely tolerant wife, as I say. I'm an impossible man to live with, and I know it. <laughs> she knows it, too. But, of course, look what I have painted on the wall. Genoi oios esi. Um, originally, I guess it was genoi oios esi mathon. Um... Become what you are. And genoi oios mathon, genoi oios esi mathon is become what you are, having learned what it is. That's uh, Pindar, one of Nietzsche's favorite quotes. Um, basically, he was saying, become what you are, stop being what everyone else wants you to be, or stop being what you know contemporary 19th century society says you must be, even if it's not in your nature, just become a human being. I like it that way, but I also like it. It's a you know pretty resounding repudiation of idealism. <laughs> uh, just be what you are. It's absurd to try and be something other than what you are. Um, but, you know, that's an interesting one. That's something I really like to ruminate on. Become what you are. What is it? What are we? What is it that we can be? But, of course, my favorite one is this one. Gnothi se oton. That's a uh, know thyself. That's um, Apollo's maxim to humanity. Um, almost, it's quite similar to that one, to become what you are, but know thyself. So I guess first you should know yourself, then you should become what you are. Now, the uh, question arises, what do I put here? <laughs> There's another spot. I'm sort of gravitating towards um, Meden Agan, which is another one of Apollo's maxims to uh, ancient Greek society. Um, nothing in excess, or all things in moderation, or don't overdo it, or stick within your limits. Um, you know, kind of, all three of them are kind of related to each other. Remember what you are, become what you are, and learn what you are. Um, and don't overdo it because you have limits and humans should stick within their limits. Push them, yes, but stick within them. Um, I don't know. I wonder how long it is before my wife insists that I paint it over. And as I say, I won't have much of a case to place uh, uh, to put forth in terms of my right to do this to my bedroom wall. <laughs> um, although, I guess I have a little bit of right on my side. She says she doesn't want any paintings hung on the wall because this is a very small bedroom and you have to sort of scramble along the walls to move anywhere inside the bedroom. So, you know, lots of scope to knock paintings off walls and onto babies. <laughs> I've only got one, but, you know. Uh, so I said, all right, then I get to paint stuff directly onto the walls. <laughs> And uh, so she said, okay, um, which isn't a big deal. I own my own house and it's a very small, junky kind of house, but I love it. I like living here and I'm a philosophy nut, self-taught, obviously. Um, but um, it's uh, an interesting idea, this thing of philosophical maxims or philosophical mottos and 
what actually effect they have on us, because are they striking you intuitively or intellectually? I'd say that strikes me more intuitively, because in common with many people, I've spent the better part of my adult life washing Christianity off myself. <laughs> um, and I tend to see Christianity as a toxic faith. Um, I tend to see it as something that turns humans against themselves, and I particularly don't like it for its ideas of good and evil. Um, sin, especially, is an idea that I strenuously object to. Uh, that kind of thing. And that strikes me as a pretty good repudiation of all that kind of thing. Um, so I suppose I like to remind myself, intuitively, of course, as all these things are, um, that I am what I am, and that uh, idealism of any kind, and as I say, I'm sort of tainted by the Christian version of idealism, but it's not the only kind by any stretch. I have equally hard time dealing with hardline Marxists, for example. <laughs> uh, or, as everyone, everyone knows, the uh, anti-natalist set. Um, objectivists, that kind of thing. Anyone that sort of makes an ideal... Anyone who wants a garden with as few weeds as possible is probably going to get a bit of an argument from me. Uh, and that's basically what I sort of default to. But as I say, open to suggestions. Miden Agan seems to be the way to go. Nothing in excess. Back to Gregory Sadler. <laughs>